Merry Christmas, my friends. This is Thomas Zoe 3000 here, and today I have a very special model train review video for you. It is of none other than the Bachman End Scale Spirit of Christmas train set, which I got back in June. Or was it July? <laughs> oh boy. Well, we'll just say I got it the first time I went to North Bay's museum and gift shop. Yeah. I saw this set there and I just thought to myself, okay, I gotta have this set for Christmas. <laughs> and ever since I've resisted temptation to open up the box until now. Actually, at the time of filming this video, it's December 20th, but for you guys, it will be December 25th, because that's the day I'm gonna post this video. <laughs> yeah. So, I hope you all are having a very wonderful Christmas. Uh, I'm pretty sure I am as well. <laughs> uh, I'll know on the 25th. <laughs> which is a few days from now. And of course, uh, you will see a Christmas gifts video come out when that time arrives. But for now, uh, we're going to get into doing this video. As you can see on the box here, it says Spirit of Christmas. And we got a little 060 steam locomotive. I got a couple of them from Bachman, though they are all in HO scale, not N scale, like this one. Anyway, yeah, there's the little 060 in question with the tender of the red and green colors and the silver. And of course, it comes with Bachman Signature Easy Track, nickel silver for N scale. I don't think they have the black track road bed for N scale, do they? And of course, we have three. Finely detailed pasture cars, including old-time combine and two-time coaches. Or two old-time coaches. <laughs> Wrong words to use. <laughs> and in case you're wondering how much I pay for this set, there's the price. $199.95. You know, to be honest, this year I have done quite a few uh, train set review videos. From Walther's, Bachman, yeah, I've done a few of them. And I still have a few more coming out soon. Um, I think... Well, we'll save that for another time. <laughs> My brain's not working properly today. <laughs> then again, when is it ever? <laughs> anyway, here's the back of the box. You get a picture of the train set. Including with a sticker for the world's greatest hobby. And there's the list of everything you get in the box. Including another Bachman controller. And it shows you different ways of how you can expand your train set into a layout. And a little fun fact, guys, that in 2021, I will be building the end scale layout. So that'll be the second layout on my project list. Uh, first up, well, we'll get to that later, actually. I don't want to drag this out any longer than it needs to be. So without further ado, let's get this set out of the box. If I can. Oh, <laughs> Looks like I can today. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the camera from sliding off my legs. Because that's where I got it right now. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Okay. I got the wrapping off. Now comes the little tab. Clean up inside the box. And... Voila, we've got the train set. Right here. We got some paperwork. First up, we got our list of contents inside the box. Then we got some easy track system, I guess, instructions. Yep. Pretty cool. And get on track for more fun pamphlets. Very nice. That's nice for beginners. And we also have uh, stuff in the French. Oh, probably it's English on the other side. Yep. 90 day limited warranty. Simple stuff. Not sure what that was. Instructions on the 060. And 
Why don't you look at that? For the Bachman Trains catalog. <laughs> All right. So diving into this box, we got our main power cord that connects from the controller to the track. And this is the power cord that will give power to the tracks. And of course, we do have another Bachman controller. Not all like that large scale one I had. Oh well. So yeah, I got another one of those. That's the first time I'm actually getting a chance to look at some Bachman N scale easy track. All of my N scale track previously has been from Kato. And that's what I'm going to be using on my future layout. It's just me, or is the track sparkling? Well, at least the rope bed is. Hmm. Okay, so these are specialty tracks, I guess. <laughs> Very nice. Let's put those here for now. Got some more curved tracks. And now, for the grand pieces here. Something you've all been waiting for. themselves. Of course we got some nice straight tracks, four of them. Really nice. And now for the grand piece. Easy does it. And here we are with number 25, the Spirit of Christmas engine. Wow. Looks like it's permanently connected too. Number 25. Honestly, it's been a while since I've done any end scale related reviews, so yeah. It's really nice to look at an end scale piece again. I'm just going to put the loco um, right here, just so that way I don't drop it. And we'll have a look at the coaches now. It's nice to get some end scale coaches for a change. This is our combine coach with the green roof. Mm, really nice. All right, we got coach number one. And then we got coach number two with the red roof this time. Very nice. Really like the look of that one. Oop. <laughs> I'll just put them right there. Just so that way I'm not going to drop them. Because that would be the last thing I want to do. And here is coach number three. With a green roof. Alright. So that's the unboxing portion of the video. And now, off camera, I'm going to set up the track and we're going to get number 25 running solo for a little while. And just like that, the track is set up. And yeah, I do think there's some uh, glittery parts on the ballast here. Yeah, I guess it seems to sparkle a bit. I don't know if that's for all end scale tracks or if it's just, you know, the Christmas setup. I want to ask you guys, do you have Bachman N Scale Easy Track? If so, does it have little sparkles in it like mine does? Or is it just like the HO Scale Track? I'd love to hear your answer in the comment section down below. In the meantime, uh, why don't we get on to running the Spirit of Christmas? I'm going to put you on the floor for a second, guys. While I do this. These engines are really tiny. All right. Spirit of Christmas is on the track and hopefully, yep, completely on the track. Okay, I got everything hooked up now. So let's see which way it's gonna go. 
Forward or backwards? Oh, forward, okay. Let's gonna double check our track. Yeah. Get a couple of shots of the engine running by itself. And then when we come back, we'll hook up some coaches to it. And maybe there'll be one more surprise to go along with this little running session. But I'm not going to say anything just yet. You'll have to wait and see to find out after the test run. All right, and the running in of number 25 is complete. I have to say, this is a very smooth little N-scale engine. Very smooth indeed. And, as you guys can probably tell, it is quiet. Really quiet, so that's good. So if you really want to surprise, let's say, your family at Christmas time, with a little N-scale train set running around, then this is definitely the train set for you. Of course, I can't truly say that until we see the coaches in action. So, I'm just gonna put the coaches on the track and get them coupled up to number 25. And then, yep, we're onto a running session. <laughs> and what's that little surprise I mentioned earlier? <laughs> Well, you might be able to see it in the background. Here's a little hint. I got it last year for a very good low price. Now, the couplers are not connecting. That's the problem with connecting on a corner here. So I'm gonna just push the coaches back a bit. Right up to there. And then number 25 back to collect them. All right, should be coupled up now, I think. Come on, come on, number 25. Nope, no, she is not coupled up. All right, hmm. Coupler system's not really that great on the coaches. Oh boy, oh boy, hang on. Hang on, my friends. Oh, come on. Okay, so the coupler system really isn't that great. So I guess I will be coupling it up in front of you guys. So really not the world's most perfect coupler system. Ah, there we go. The tender coupling was not in line. Okay, come on you. <laughs> The world's longest struggle with couplers. Okay, we know we can push the coaches. What about pull them? Hmm, okay. Was not expecting that. Something's off here. Hmm. I'm going to try to figure this out. Be back in one second. It's been about a second for you guys, but for me, it's been at least a few hours. Here is what I've discovered with this little locomotive. 
One, it is extremely light. Meaning, sadly, it can't haul the three coaches without spinning its wheels like crazy. Yeah, it's severely underweight. So, in the future, I'm going to try and basically add some weights into the locomotive and the tender in the hopes that I can get it a little bit heavier, and that way it's able to haul all three coaches. Yeah, that's the general plan. Also, another thing I discovered with this locomotive is the fact that it was severely under-lubricated. It was dry to the point where it was drier than a desert. Yeah. Severely dry. And also, when you're trying to maintain this little locomotive, it's not as easy as you might think. Really, it's not as easy as you might think. Unfortunately, I'm not able to answer the question of how it's able to push the coaches backwards. Yet going forwards, it can barely handle the three of them. But again, um, the main issue with going forwards is the fact that uh, this locomotive is severely underweight. You know, I got a little upset with this locomotive earlier and I thought, oh great, I just bought the world's most expensive decoration. Because that's all it was good for. But, no, I was able to fix it, uh, lubricate it, and get it running. And like I said, in the future, I will add some weights into it and, you know, get it running. And get it hauling all three coaches. Until then, um, sadly, this beautiful coach will have to remain on the sidelines. But it will remain in shot so that way you guys can see it. And now, without further ado, with just two coaches in tow, here goes number 25 and the Spirit of Christmas train. Believe me, this is the best I can do for now. It is really, really light. But at least it's running. And in case you're wondering, does it have a headlamp? Well, it does, but it doesn't light up. And look at those wheels. Oh yeah, and that's another thing with the wheels too. There are no traction tires. And you would want traction tires on an engine who's underweight. Yeah. So, that's a bit of a downer, guys. That's a bit of a downer. But, you know, I'm still looking to the bright side. At least it's running. Oop, <laughs> I bumped into it. And it's at least hauling a couple of coaches, so... If you don't mind that fact that it's only hauling two of its three coaches, then you know what? It's still a pretty good little train to have around the house for Christmas. And especially considering the fact that it's small enough, you can have it either under the tree or, you know, could have it sitting on the table. Anyway, yeah, we'll just let 25 run around for a bit. And here's that surprise I mentioned earlier. I'm sure you guys have been waiting to see this big guy run for quite some time. This is, of course, the Thomas Kincaid Christmas Express number two, an ON30, with the beautifully lit up coaches. It looks really good. And I have to say, it's nice to see it up and running again. <laughs> uh, the last time I ran it before today was, I think, July of last year. So that's a really long time. Yeah, it was a really long time ago that I got a chance to run this engine. But, hey, it's going to run today. And there it goes. I'm just going to move the camera a bit. As you can tell, the coaches do light up. Sadly, the end scale coaches do not. So that's a bit of a letdown, but that's okay. And now, let's have ourselves a little running session with not one, but two Christmas trains.
She's struggling. Her wheels are spinning. But, like the heart of a true champion, this little engine just keeps going on. I'm going to admit that earlier I made a harsh statement on the Spirit of Christmas train set and just saying, no, don't even think about buying it. I'm going to correct myself on that one. So, here I go. Yes, I'll admit it's not the world's most perfect train set. I really wish the locomotive wasn't, you know, severely underweight. And I really, really wish it was lubricated better. But then again, we don't know how long the locomotive has been sitting in the box. You know, before I purchased it. It's been in the box for about almost six months since I got it. It could have been on the shelf a lot longer than that. So probably the lubricants dried up by that point. So who really knows? Overall, though, it does look the part. It looks really good. It is a quiet runner, I can tell you that much. In fact, most of the noise is coming from my ON30 train, the Thomas Kincaid Christmas Express. <laughs> and, yeah, honestly, the Spirit of Christmas, it's a pretty decent little set. And if you can add weights into your locomotive, make sure it's well lubricated and well looked after, then, yeah, I would definitely say pick up the set and, you know, just have fun with it. Who knows, you might run on a big N-scale layout or, like I said earlier, just display it for your family at around Christmas time. Because who doesn't love seeing a little toy train running around a tree or on a table at Christmas time? What a trooper that one. Well, I'll see what I can do in getting this locomotive to be a little more powerful. But until then, uh, that's about it for this little video. So, until next time, my friends, I'm Thomas Oak 2000. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm signing off. See you guys later.